When it comes to the VR headset space, there are only a few companies that are trying to make it work, for better and for worse. There are some who say that virtual reality is the future of not just gaming, but entertainment. But the fact of the matter is that VR is well and truly not for everyone, and to try and force it can lead to some problems. That especially goes for those who have a headset that isn't exactly up to snuff. Which is where Microsoft falls into place, sadly, because they need to get through some hurdles to be contenders in this technology space. Allow us to show you HoloLens 2 inside Microsoft's latest headset. The beginning of HoloLens. The first HoloLens launched in 2016. For Microsoft, it was a top secret project that somehow actually stayed secret until launch. The device was Microsoft's take on augmented reality, floating holograms in the real world. It was, on one hand, amazing. No one had ever shipped such a device before. On the other, it was awkward in just about every other way. The UI was confusing. You couldn't grab or poke the holograms as you'd expect. Instead, you had to awkwardly hold a finger vertically and air tap, a gesture I might best describe as something you do playing with a child, using your index finger to speak as King Friday. The field of view was constantly disappointing. Holograms were consistently cropped in your view, destroying the illusion. HoloLens 2 addresses these shortcomings with twice the viewable area and better onboard AI, which allows you to grab corners of a hologram to stretch it out, or just snatch the whole thing with your hand. Another highlight of the new model, some truly ingenious onboarding UX. A hummingbird is the first thing HoloLens 2 users will experience when putting on the headset out of the box and one of those magical moments you hear about in mixed reality. Because you wouldn't expect a bird of all things to get you going, and yet you will feel something as the bird comes onto your hand and it looks like it's right there. Instinctual Interaction Microsoft dubs this approach Instinctual Interaction, or Instinctual Design, and it wants to build it into every part of the HoloLens experience. The idea is to make learning the UX feel natural rather than instructive right down to how you put on the new headset. It's now like donning a baseball cap thanks to a painstakingly iterated industrial design. Truthfully, the hardware itself is still the biggest single barrier to the mass realization of mixed reality. The first HoloLens was a self-contained headset computer. Amazing, but wear it for long and you realized it was front-loaded. It would begin to tip down onto your nose, forcing you to readjust or look through it like a pair of ill-fitting reading glasses. Microsoft heard all this feedback from its early adopters and acknowledged that in addition to housing more sensors, more computational power, more battery, and a bigger display, the HoloLens 2 design also had to be more comfortable. I was like, let me make sure I got this right, recalls Carl Ledbetter with a laugh. A lot more stuff on your head? Feeling natural, being technological. Ledbetter, along with Microsoft technical fellow Alex Kipman, the mastermind behind Microsoft Connect, who you could also call the father of HoloLens, both agree that the ultimate incarnation of HoloLens would be a pair of glasses that was so thin and light it would be indistinguishable from what you'd buy at lens crafters. But the reality is, the technology just isn't there yet, says Ledbetter. Kipman doesn't want to pretend it is either. That's why HoloLens 2 doesn't solve the problem of weight by making you wear a little computer on your belt, like the competing Magic Leap. And it doesn't give up on the promise of holograms with a smaller, less immersive device, like Google Glass did. The inventor takes a philosophical approach to the headset, arguing that you have to embrace what it is as a tool, not what it could be as an accessory. HoloLens is not made to be fashionable, Kitman says. Technology should not be fashion. Fashion is ephemeral and expires. Hardware should be timeless. If aliens came to Earth thousands of years from now, do archaeology, and find these devices, they should understand that it's something meaningful. So for HoloLens 2, Microsoft began its ergonomic research anew. It 3D scanned 600 individual heads of people with varying age, gender, and race in an attempt to come up with the thresholds of inions, the protrusions on the back of your head, and foreheads both of which can vary widely by person. All of this work informed prototypes for new fit systems because HoloLens couldn't feasibly be custom made for different sized heads like shoes or for feet. Fitting the user. 
Since the headset was being designed before the actual HoloLens 2 laser display was finished, Ledbetter's team had to be creative in testing the project with lo-fi proofs. They would 3D print long tubes and attach them to the head rigs to simulate having a tiny window lined up perfectly in your eye. In another approach, the lenses were mocked up in acrylic. Wearing these headsets myself, they pinch my hair and slice into my skin. But in terms of simulating the optics of the real device, they work as intended. One other major design issue these prototypes were constructed to test was weight. What the team had realized all too well was that the HoloLens 1 was front heavy. But by studying cultures around the world, known for carrying heavy loads and baskets upon their heads, they realized that fixing HoloLens might not require cutting weight. What if they just balanced it better? In an intensive prototyping process, they weighed down these various HoloLens contraptions with dumb, dead mass, just to understand what the comfort gains and losses would be with varying designs. Human factor specialists on the team ran electrodes to the back of testers' necks to test how their bodies responded. What they found was that if HoloLens was balanced about 50-50 to the front and back of the head, they could reduce the activation of supportive neck muscles by three. But from an industrial design perspective, doing that was easier said than done. It required splitting the headset's single computer vision system into two sections, one in the front, one in the back. To connect them, wiring had to be run through the headband of the device, a span of just a few inches, as opposed to soldering all of the components onto a single circuit board, like you would when designing a phone. Any extra wiring was a serious UX concern because, as Kitman puts it, in mixed reality, where a device is reading and responding to the movement of your eyes, head, and body at the same time, the speed of light is too slow. Naturally, Microsoft was able to make things work for them enough to ensure that the HoloLens 2 shipped and was at least something people could wear, but it's not exactly the best VR headset around, and they know it. Plus, there are still some issues that can't be ignored about VR as a whole. VR isn't for everyone. Here's the thing. If you put a VR headset on someone, you'll likely get them to react in a way that makes them happy because they're not used to what VR can be. And if you get them to try a game like Beat Sabers, you'll see them happy to be in the VR space. But just because they're that way for a singular period doesn't mean they're going to be a VR follower for life. That's not how it works. Especially since there are plenty of people who can't wear VR headsets because of their eyes, like people who need glasses or those who don't have the space to truly enjoy VR like it's intended. Plus, as laid out here, just making a VR headset that is comfortable and yet feels interactive and intuitive is something that hasn't fully been achieved yet. Not just Microsoft, but by all the other companies as well. Could VR one day be something that truly revolutionizes the world? Absolutely. But right now, and especially based on what you see with the HoloLens 2, there's a lot of barriers that need to be broken through in order to get us to a place of it being accessible to everyone in the right way. So, what do you think? What do you think of this look at the HoloLens 2 and how it is something that is special, but not precisely in the way that you would want the VR headset of the future to be? Do you think that the HoloLens 2 can improve? Or will it take the HoloLens 3 to get things done the right way? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next time on the channel.